we're here out west in Albuquerque, New Mexico for some special editions of the Curator's Corner. Our good friend Phil Schreier, Senior Curator with the National Firearms Museum, is out here. We're sitting here at the National Police Shooting Championships in Albuquerque, but that's not all we're doing, Phil. We're going to wrap up these special segments. We're calling them Curator's Corner West. Yep. We're going to finish up here with some neat trials pistols, and then we're moving to a new location next week, aren't we? We are, John. Next week we're going to get to go out to our, our newest home, National Firearms Museum of the West, which is in Albuquerque, well, 20 miles east of Albuquerque in Edgewood, uh, Colorado, Edgewood, New Mexico. I know what time zone I'm in, not what date. <laughs> and uh, we're going to Edgewood, New Mexico to Founders Ranch, the headquarters of the Single Action Shooting Society. And boy, we got a neat announcement, a great place to show off to you next Wednesday. Oh, I can hardly wait for that. All right, now let's get back to what we're doing. We're talking about the centennial of the coal. Of, of the 45, let me get that right, and and, and the, the build-up, the trials that led up to that, and it's a fascinating story. You left off last week with the story of Savage. Why don't you recap that and move on to the Savage trial? Well, there were a number of different competitors that were looking to capture the very, what would become a lucrative contract for the U.S. service pistol in 45 ACP caliber. Uh, one of the guys uh, that was encouraged uh, was uh, Georg Luger, who had developed a, a toggle action uh, to his uh, uh, semi-automatic. It was fairly successful and popular uh, overseas. Um, and he was encouraged to, uh, to submit a gun in 45 Colt. He made five of them. Uh, two are still known to exist. Uh, he was in, in, uh, encouraged to make 200 more for the uh, trials to actually go out and do field trials. He said, no, nah, I'm not going to tool up for 200 uh, Lugers. And as a result, those 200 or those five guns of the two have known to exist are worth a million dollars. Uh, this is one of the 200 that he did submit with a uh, U.S. Uh, Eagle Seal shield here on the uh, on the breach. Luger. Yeah. And uh, it was in, in 30 caliber, 7.65. And this is one of 200 that was used uh, in, in trials. Again, uh, Luger didn't didn't end up being in the final four, so to speak. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, it's as interesting. You would say. Though, very determined guy. He he, he did the original. Did you say five of them? Yeah. But he wouldn't. But he submitted 200. But he wouldn't tool up for those. So he goes, "Hey, I'll give you these." Right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it, it might, it's more or less the same, but a different caliber. <laughs> Wow. Um, so Luger's out. And then let's talk about this one, the final one here. Now this is the uh, this is the the the, the other other dog in the in the fight. Right. Uh, this is the Savage. Uh, in 45 caliber. It was the uh, the largest caliber Savage. They were famous for their 1907-1910 style semi-automatics in 32 uh, auto. Ten shots quick was the uh, mm -hmm. was the great ad. Even Buffalo Bill hawked uh, Savage <laughs> products, uh, but in '45, I mean, just look look down the pipe on that. It's unbelievable. Uh, again, it's got a little futuristic uh, design to it, uh, whereas you have on 1911 little serrations to grab. You got big ones here to get all the very positive. Little itty bitty rear sight though, not quite the uh, <laughs> formidable sight you would find on the 1911. Uh, again, a grip safety which they they had built into all these guns. Uh, the uh, the gun itself is pretty neat. The one thing I gotta say is this is one gun I have never shot. I really want to give it a try. Uh, there were 200 of these made. This is serial number one. Jeez. This is serial number one. Uh, when the Army tested the guns, they were the property of the U.S. Army, uh, or they, they, they were sent back to Savage. I'm sorry, excuse me on that. They were sent back to Savage saying thanks, but no thanks. We went with the Colt. Uh, Savage re blew them, cleaned them up, sold them out of their office in Philadelphia, out Jeez. of a storefront in Philadelphia. <laughs> I think and, I'll know. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we don't need these. Yeah. <laughs> and now, them? now there's some of the most valuable autos out and, there. And, and I was going to say, uh, of all of them, probably phys like visually the most striking in difference. I mean, you yeah. talk about one of the other ones, look like a, something like a modern, like Flash Gordon kind of guy. That's definitely got a very distinctive look to it. Yeah, it, it, it really does. 
There are even holsters made for these uh, to go along with them. Uh, you know, John, we've been very fortunate. The eight guns we've looked at over the last four weeks uh, are part of our centennial exhibit on the 1911. And this exhibit's been made uh, possible through the generosity of a, of a very dear friend of the museum, a great friend of mine, a member of the American Society of Arms Collectors, Bailey Brower. And Bailey uh, originally loaned us these guns for the collection, uh, which we were very excited. Uh, and then he literally blew our socks off and donated the collection to wow. us. And Bailey and his wife were just tremendous friends, very generous, great supporters of the NRA and the museum's uh, programs. And, and we just can't thank him enough for putting some guns that we could never hope to acquire oh, otherwise. How great is that? And what an yeah. appropriate home for them at the National Firearms Museum. Hey, tell me, Phil, how can folks come and see these or uh, in person or, or perhaps online? Well, we'd like for you to come out in person and visit us off Interstate Route 66, the intersection of Route 50 in Fairfax, Virginia. We're open seven days a week. There's plenty of uh, free parking and free admission. If you can't visit us off the interstate, come visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. Again, 24-7 uh, on the internet service. We got a lot of neat videos that John, your crew has out put together for us. Uh, and uh, you know, just over two mil and a half million views on one of them already. We're wow. just really excited about the great job uh, and, and the working relationship we have with NRA News. And thank you so much for, for helping us get the word out. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for another exciting edition. And be here next week for sure for next week's Curator's Corner West. Exciting new place we're going to go and visit. We'll do That's that right. next week. Don't, don't miss it and wear your spurs.